here we are. Yeah, we're here at church. We're taking a walk. Yeah, that's what I heard. At we're least. trying something different. We we figured the spring is so nice. It and is springtime out it's, here. It's really really nice because yeah. where we live, it's not too hot. Yeah, it's not too cold. It's, Meaning it's not snowing. It's just right, actually. Right. right now, it's perfect. You know, and this place here was filled with this much snow not too long ago, huh? Yeah. So people don't get it all, but you're going to see is everything's kind of green and beautiful and blue yeah. skies and yeah, birds absolutely. are chirping and bees and are attacking her for yes. some reason. I don't <laughs> no, know It might why. be the yellow, but it might uh, be because <laughs> I'm a beautiful flower. Oh, that's Or it, it might be the sunflower <laughs> on my arm. I, just I may think you're a giant <laughs> flower. So, oh, but man. Bob said he had something on his heart, so we're just going to walk and we're we want to... We're going to walk that way, this way, wherever, Yeah, why right? don't we show them the fellowship hall? Okay, let's go over first. here. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how this works. So... Are you still filming us? Yes. <laughs> nice. So a little bit about our church, I guess. Yeah. Some people want to know. So yeah, we've been up here for a long time, like way over 30 years. Yeah. And our church is celebrating its 50th year as in existence this year, matter of fact. So you should come and celebrate with us. It's yeah. happening in this uh, autumn of yeah. this year. But um, yeah, our church has been here a long time. This place used to just be a big hill and we built it with our own little hands. It was kind of crazy. Not mine, I wasn't even a person yet. Yeah, we were planning for you. Right, Yeah. exactly. But and we, yeah, we have like beautiful property. Yeah, we're here, in so. Miwok Village of California, which yeah. if you don't know where that is, you should Google it because I can't yeah. even, but we're basically three hours east of San Francisco. That's that way. Yeah. That way. And that then, way. and then we're not too far as the crow flies, if you were a crow, from Yosemite. So you come up here, you get to go see Yosemite and yeah. El Capitan, all that stuff. Yeah. You'd have a great time. So you'll see that we have all the mountains and the trees. We're in the forest. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. great. Over and here is our fellowship hall we're walking to right now, and it's kind of cool. And George is like spanning over there, showing us everything. I don't know if we're, it's even It open. might be locked if it is. I have keys, you know. They give me keys oh, here. But good. do we want to go in there? We don't have to, but we, uh, we let's can. Take, we can take a peek in there. I don't know. Uh, Let's see what happens. Oh. Oh, yeah, I guess there's light. But someday we'll take you for a visit on the inside of stuff, too. because we'll Our church is called Word of Life Fellowship. Fellowship. And every Sunday yeah. and Wednesday, we all gather in the fellowship hall. And yeah. It's a big part of who we are. It is what we are. It's everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's everything because there's food. Food. Yeah. Everything is around food. You know Jesus was a foodie, right? Oh, Everybody yeah. knows that, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this that was our fellowship fellowship hall. And over here is our junior church. You can kind of look over that way. That's where our little kiddos go every uh, Sunday and Wednesday and have a great time. Oh yeah, they learn a lot. They actually amazing. They do. Yeah. Hey, can you actually see our church from here? Like our church is a gigantic octagon. It's pretty great. See, there it is. It's pretty cool. And we have, you know, all sorts of uh, Stuff going on in there with God. It's really great. Should we go inside the sanctuary? I don't know. No lights in there yet? Nah, we'll have to turn the lights on someday. How about we'll bring you guys there on a Sunday? How about oh, that? yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think Brooke is walking fast. She has a plan here. I was just thinking we can go to Zoe's. Zoe's? Yeah. Coffee shop? Yeah, we have a coffee shop on oh, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That, I think, is like. Crucial. It's crucial. <laughs> George is behind the camera. He's an awesome guy. He's a disciple this year in our discipleship program. And um, he's just helping us out with the filming because for us to try to do this, it'd be really crazy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. George's shoes untied. We should probably cut the camera real quick so you could tie that. So. Yeah, we're back. Poor George's shoes yeah, are back. Yeah, he tied his shoe now. We're good. That's a good thing. I hate seeing him. His shoe is fall. always untied, though. Yeah. But anyway, we're on our way to um, the coffee house. But as we go there, this is the entrance for our church. church. And there's always McHenry. It's my favorite. One of yeah. our our uh, dear members. Yeah. He's this great guy. And he's a Navajo chief. Yeah, he's a Native American, <laughs> which is great because we live in Native American country. Yeah, I, and he's, everybody does. He stands, <laughs> right. yeah. Bob likes to be politically correct. <laughs> yeah. But he stands at the door every Sunday and he says, Good morning, praise yeah. the Lord, and he calls yeah. every uh, everyone smiley. I love it. <laughs> it is you know, great. I wanted to share something with the group here. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking around, and if you actually spin around, George, with me, you see like we have a lot of great stuff, a lot of great stuff around here. Like, you know, you know, just wonderful solar panels and 
all sorts of crazy places that we have for our disciples and all that. And we have great people too. Yeah, like George and Brookie here, you know what I'm saying? But what the Lord gave me this morning was kind of weird. It was out of First uh, Kings 14. And it's about this king there, right? He's the son of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And when he takes over, okay, there was a Jeroboam, a Roboam, and this guy Roboam, uh -huh. he gets in there and he takes over and Egypt comes, the world, uh -huh. and steals all his stuff. Mm -hmm. Steals his personal house stuff mm -hmm. and the house of the Lord stuff. Mm -hmm. Be and so it was interesting to me because then he takes that stuff, you know, they take it away and it was all gold. Mm -hmm. And he replaces it with bronze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like not the real thing, right. you know what I'm saying? And then he guards that stuff really carefully. Like he right. gets all these guys to guard it right. when he walks in. Scourged. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like now he's like he's worried. concerned. He's right. worried. But he didn't guard God's stuff before that, mm -hmm. which really struck my heart mm -hmm. that this morning. And so, yeah. like, here's the deal: we have all this great stuff, and we are very careful about it. If you ever come here, and you should. You'll see that there's a spirit of excellence around here and we keep everything really beautiful and nice. Yeah, for you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for him, for God. Yeah, for his people. For his people. Yeah. And the other thing which the Lord put in my heart is mm -hmm. that, and you'll find that like with our pastors and all that, that we we protect our, our stuff here. But more important, we protect our stuff, our people. That's true. It's true, right? It's we so care true. about our people's oh, yeah. lives more than the stuff. Because, you know, the stuff comes and goes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And we've seen that happen all over California. Yeah. Fires come through and everything's gone. Yeah, true. Right? I mean, you see all the trees around here. That could happen here. We're praying it never does. But the reality is what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And what will you guard like the gold of God? Right. And what we found is it's the people of God. It's the people. It's their souls. And it's caring for their lives. And, and recognizing how much worth they have in God. Did I just preach? I thought it was great. I'm sorry. I, I went but off you're on a, a tangent. Uh, I know, but it's weird. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say that yes. just because, like, I was thinking about all our stuff that we have here, and it really does matter, and we really care for it. Like, this weekend, we're going to have a big old work crew, and all of our people in our church come out and help out and mm -hmm. help out because there's so much property. Yeah. But we, you know, we care about the people. And that's Absolutely. really what's critical in Jesus. He, when he gave a, his apostles charge of his church, it was the people. It wasn't the stuff. It is the stuff. Right. But it's the people too. Right. Okay. And so to remember that. So yeah, as we take you for our little stroll down memory lane here, <laughs> <laughs> we got these funny little like light uh, stands here and stuff as we're walking all across. Well, and I think because <laughs> our the heart of our church is to care for its people. Uh huh. You know, the faithful and little, faithful and much yeah. scripture goes um, here. But I think because from the beginning we have been faithful to care for the people and the souls and the hearts of the people. Yes. Then that's how it's spread into having the great stuff, the earthly stuff. Yes. Because we also care for that. Every Sunday we have cleanup. Yes. And it's because, one, our pastors can clean up this whole entire campus by themselves mm -mm. or the whole fellowship hall. And it's because we all take ownership of caring for one another right. and caring for this place and stewarding what God has given us. This is so good. You know, this is missed by a lot of Christianity today. They forget that, you know, churches are nonprofits, right? They're a 501 and they're not owned by the pastors. They're a right. nonprofit. They're not sure. owned. They're they're corporately, if you right. will, owned. And they they so it's not it doesn't belong to the pastors. They don't have the paperwork on it themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the people don't belong to the pastors. Right. Even though they are our our sheep, if you want to call them that. Right. If you want they're our they're our responsibility for the Lord. But the Lord says that we have to give an account for their souls. That's it. Right? We have to care for their souls, their life, what matters right. to them. And uh, we have to give an account before God for that. And, you know, a lot of stuff comes and goes and changes in life. Mm -hmm. But that's really what's critical, what's important. Yeah. And church, so we're showing you church, but we also kind of showing you church, like how we do church here. Huh? Yeah. 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 So yeah. over here, this is the lodge. Um, we have a Christian retreat center on our campus where people can come and yeah. retreat from Christians. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's where, um, you know, because it's, uh, it's a nonprofit as well. Yeah. And it 
ser- it's here to serve other Christians. Yeah. But it also has another purpose. Our Crosswalk Discipleship School students live here on campus, mm-hmm. which is incredible, uh, especially in the snow, too. It's very beautiful and very peaceful. And You the, used to live here. I did. Yeah, I did Crosswalk. Yeah. And George behind the camera, he's in Crosswalk right yeah. now. But Crosswalk is coming to a close here in a couple months, and it's time now for applications. So if you're interested in discipleship school, nine months live in school where you get to be with people like Pastor Bob. Oh, no, not that. (laughs) (laughs) And you get to learn from our lead pastors and other amazing elders and people in our church and our worship director. Mm -hmm. You also just get to apply the word to your life, and it's very amazing. And I don't know, I just thought it was a huge blessing, and it changed my life. So anyway, that's a plug for Crosswalk. So if you want to look into it you go to their website crosswalkds.com and yeah it'd be great to meet you guys enjoy it for sure we've had lots of people come through crosswalk over it's about eight eight years now going on our ninth year i thought it was 10 already oh it's a long time you know when you're old like me you forget and stuff but yeah it's been uh, incredible uh transformation in a lot of people's lives uh including brookie yeah, my life yeah. is way different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can watch my testimony video. Oh, she's good on her videos. She's like a star. No, I'm not no. a star. <laughs> but now we're here at the Zoe Coffee House, and this is where yeah. you get coffee. It's the house of coffee. House of coffee. Not the house of God, the house of coffee. God coffee, same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Got it. <laughs> but it's Zoe, because Zoe is the... Life. life. The Zoe life of God. Yeah, it's a it's Greek awesome. word. Yeah, it's Greek. We'll take we'll take Greek. For now. Anyway, yes. so let's go inside <laughs> and just get some coffee. Maybe I don't think Pastor Celine is here right now, but that would be pretty cool if she was. It's that time in the morning when there are not that many people around, I which know, is so a nice yes. quiet time. All set. Are you? Mm-hmm. Work, drink. Yeah. What's that? Good morning, Jen. This is Jen. She's great. She goes You're to our great. church. Thank you. And um, she also makes really good coffee, so we're pretty blessed that we got her today. Mm. Uh, I would love an almond milk latte with cinnamon. Nice and hot. The it's a good place. It's a really good place. Kind of hey, come here. Mm-hmm. I go iced. Not non Goodies. Perfect. Lots of goodies. Oh, look at this. That's way too too uh, much goodies. Do you goodies. want tea or coffee? Uh, I mean, I'll have a coffee. I just do regular coffee. Regular coffee. Regular coffee. Cool. Regular coffee. Cool. Yeah. How about, how about the Americana? Can you trust me with the coffee? I can always trust you. Okay, Bob, do you yes, want hot or cold? You want iced? Americana? Oh, no, just coffee. Okay, hot. Do you want any? No, no, I'm making you a drink. I don't know what you're like doing it. to me. I, I just know. like, I actually drink this Do you trust me? Coffee. Do you trust me? You trust me. Can I tell you a story? It's been 20 years. Don't you trust me? I right do now? trust you, but can I tell you a story? Yes. See, like, I don't really go to coffee houses uh-huh. okay, much. And the first time I ever did was a Starbucks down in Modesto with a friend of mine, uh-huh. Rick. You know Rick Shepard. Oh, that's and my so, future grandpa. Yes, you know him very well. <laughs> so I go down there with him and his wife and my wife, and we're Christmas shopping. So the ladies are shopping, because they do that really good, and we go to in the Starbucks, and I walk up to the counter. I'd never been in the Starbucks before. This was a long time ago. And the guy goes, uh, you know, he, you know, Rick orders something. Or something, thing, yeah, right? of course. And I, and I go, and the guy looks at me and goes, what do you, what do you want? I go, I, I don't know. He goes, well, what do you drink at home? I go, taster's choice. He goes, get out of my store. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. He goes, get out of my store. And everybody, I mean, there was a bunch, it's Christmas, there are a bunch of people. Right. They all start laughing. And Rick is like, oh, I'm with him, <laughs> you know. I'm like, just regular coffee. I don't know. You know I put Bob's also in. from Harlem. Yeah. In New York, a regular coffee is just a coffee with a with little cream, cream and a sugar. Little sugar. That's a regular. Regular. A little regular, regular coffee. coffee. Don't regular do it. Coffee. You got to do regular coffee once in a while, yeah? Oh, goodies. Hey, Bob. Yes, dear. Do you, I like that. Delicious. You want your coffee? Okay, when you drink coffee, is it sweet? Not Does really. it have cream in it? It has cream and a little bit of sugar. Little tiny bit. Okay, I got you. Should I trust you? Maybe. I'm going to expose when your birthday is, and then you're going to get tons of fan mail. When is that? When is my birthday? I don't know when his birthday is at all, actually. You got your coffee? 
coffee. We got the coffee. All right. Ooh. Hi, Mary Bird. Have a lovely day. Thank you. What are we doing? We're just walking back now, I guess. Oh. Should we film George? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, 2,000 years later, right. some guy who probably never got outside of a couple hundred miles from his house, right. didn't have cell phones, didn't have any of that stuff, right. uh, has such a uh, wide effect. They didn't even have a printing press then either. No, no, that didn't happen for another 1,600 well, years. That's because when, <laughs> one, it's God, and two, when miracles are happening and people uh -huh. are being healed, how is that not like mm -hmm. groundbreaking news? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Hey, last night, speaking of our our classes, we have this thing called Spirit Plus where our ministers go to, and I have the uh, privilege and honor of teaching that, you know? Yeah. Along with Pastor Shelley. And uh, we were just talking last night. It was kind of crazy what happened, actually. Uh, we're talking about Bible history, which is kind of, or church history, which could be kind of boring, you know? Right. But the reality of it is that what the Lord gave us last night, just kind of on the spot, was weird, is that uh, people, when they get a truth from God, they, they, they sink into it. There's always a lot of opposition, uh -huh. okay? And then what happens is they get settled in it. Mm -hmm. And then they start to build um, statues to that truth but in the reality the truth is the person of Jesus Christ right him actually and so like for people out there to actually know that Jesus Christ is a person he's a man that lived on the earth he's a man that's living right now in heaven and he's real and your relationship with him is personal and our thing we're doing with uh, uh, our current uh, yeah, project we're doing season two with uh, intimacy with God is with the actual person of God. And the problem is people, us, churches, many times we uh, are introduced to the person, the truth, and all of a sudden after we get comfortable with him, we make him into a statue. Mm -hmm. We make him into a thing rather than approaching him as a real person right. all the time. And that's when religion is formed. Because religion is really good with statues, but not right. so good with the person of Jesus. Because right. the person of Jesus, you know what he does? He confronts you every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like George there and you here and I'm mm -hmm. here. And like we confront each other right. every day. And our little visit back at Zoe, you know, we're confronted by people. They're real tangible and they have their personal, uh, their own personalities and the way they think. And they, they basically interrogate our lives. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the same way. He's the same way. Yeah, which is like also prophecy and yes. stuff. So yes. I, that's why a lot of religious people, I've been thinking about religion and stuff lately too, mm -hmm. because somebody was saying, I was in a conversation last night and they, they said religious people, but I knew that in the context this person mm -hmm. meant um, religious Christian people. Yeah, yeah. But religious people is also anybody who is not a true follower of Christ. Right. But even if you're an atheist, your religion yeah, very is religious. atheism. <laughs> yes. And and because even Jesus himself said he hates religion. Yeah. So yeah. it's also so because you're setting up idols or uh -huh. ideologies, Statues. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that come before God. <laughs> Absolutely. And for a lot of people, it's this idea that there's no God right. and that is their life, or it's the idea of all like a, re a religious God. So you know what? Those kind of gods are easy to handle because you can put them in a nice little box. Mm -hmm. You can take them out when you want to feel religious. You can put them back when you're done. Right. Right. You control yeah. that kind of a God. But here's the problem with our God. <laughs> He's out of control. now, <laughs> And he, he doesn't get put in a box very well. Right. <laughs> and the deal is, and like we were talking last night in our, uh, in our class, you know, if you're confronted with the person of Jesus Christ, the truth, because the Bible tells us, you shall know, that's intimacy, know the truth, him, and he will make you free. He'll change everything about your life and remake your life. And the deal is that, you know, what as us as Christians, and like we talked last night, is that we have to allow ourselves to be wowed by God all the time. Mm -hmm. And when we stop getting wowed by him, like we create a religion, right? right? That we control. And God does not want that. 
he's like not interested in that. and Jesus was not interested in that he faced the exact same thing mm -hmm. people wanted to put him in the box hey right. can you do some jump through some hoops for us can you do some miracles for us can right. you feed us can you do this for us right and God's like yeah I do all of that but I've come to actually interrogate your life impact your life and I want relationship with your life right. what about that yeah, he's not, what Jeho about that? not Jehovah yeah. Jimmy, as Pastor right, Pat right. says. Because if sure, God can, <laughs> God can give us stuff and, and provide for us. Uh -huh. And he wants to do that. That's Jehovah Jireh. He mm -hmm. wants to be that. But before he could be Jehovah anything else, he has to first be Jehovah and be God to you and yes. be your Lord, which means serving him in even if he doesn't give you anything else right you know because it's not like you shouldn't just love your parents because they got you a gift at christmas yes the interesting thing about jehovah is that uh most people in christianity go he's my lord and savior and mm -hmm. i would propose to you that for most christians he's their savior but not their lord mm -hmm. and that's when you tap into jehovah that's when you actually get jehovah when you invite him into that place where he becomes Lord of your life. That means he has a say into your life mm -hmm. and he brings things about your life. He reveals things about your life that you have to deal with and you have to like, gosh, you're right. And all those things are not all bad. Mm -hmm. Some of those things are great. Some of those things are like, hey, you do this really well. Do it for me and for my people and, and do it all over the world. Just affect people, impact people. I'm going to use your gift. I'm going to use your the things that God has put in your life to really touch other people's lives and show them Jehovah, not just tell them about Jehovah. Right. And so that's a lot of preaching. For a walk, this has been a pretty good episode. Yeah. Oh, I would really? say. Really? I think this so. This is too long an episode, don't you think? I'll cut it. We should do this more often. I think we will, for sure. Really? <laughs> <laughs> George just ran into the gutter. That was. Should we go get Pastor Jonathan just to. Just to bug him? Just to bug him. We're here to bug you. It's Pastor Whoa, what's oh. up? Ah! Uh, George. John, I think you're you're those people's favorite. Excellent. That's yeah. good to know, yeah. All right, you guys. Well, we do, we it's, time, it, uh, it's yeah. time to get back to work, get back to your day. If you're watching this, uh, you need to get back to work, <laughs> get back to your day. And so I hope. <laughs> that you all have discovered something valuable about Bob Wilk. <laughs> <laughs> or about Word of Life. Or about our church. Church Because party. we're just getting started. Things are heating up. Yeah. We are seeing big ideas yeah. flow through his mind. And turn into big reality through him and through her. That's good. Well, <laughs> If you would like to see more videos like this, where we just kind of chill, chill, chill. yeah, maybe next time we can go get some French fries mm -hmm. from Andy's. Oh, French yeah, fries. we do have a place in Mewok Village that sells French fries. <laughs> 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 maybe next time we'll just and get some of the best hamburgers. We'll just get food and eat and talk about Jesus. Um, that's a very trendy internet thing to do. The battery died, but if you want to subscribe, that'd be really cool. And you can press the notification bell to get notified every time we post a video. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment. We also have a prayer request form if you have anything you need us to pray for. And, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> Bye, you guys. She has no idea. I, I know you just wiped your... Oh, how'd you know? Because I can see the reflection. Uh -huh. <laughs>